Alright, let's clean some things. The lab game isn't too bad. 6 plus 5 is 11. Plus 4 is 15. Plus 3. Okay. Not bad. Could have pushed for more. Oh, 5. Plus 4 is 9. Plus 3 is. 5 plus 4 is 9. Plus 3 is 12. Plus 2. I think I can use all of them. Yeah, I use exactly the right force. Huzzah. Nine. Nine plus eight is seventeen. Nine plus. Yeah. Oh! Seventeen. Uh, nine. Plus eight. Yeah. Alright, nine plus eight is seventeen. Plus seven is twenty-four. 17 plus 6 is 23. Plus I'm gonna try the toothpick though. Yes, good. You did an amazing job today. I really did. I didn't break a single thing. Lithic reduction. Alright, we should probably read about that sooner than later. I first need to volunteer and cut my hand off. Um. Okay, Sherry, before you tell me off, I need to read about lithic reduction. Because I'll forget. It refers to the time a raw lithic material is obtained to the steps it undergoes to become a stone tool. Percussion flaking, removing flakes by impact. Pressure flaking, removing lithic flakes by providing direct force. Okay, I've put it off long enough, I guess. There we go. I know you're capable, but what happened doesn't sit well with me. You'll be alone all weekend, and none of us are staying in Corrine. If you'd like, you can stay with Helena and me. I held in a groan. If it was only one night, I would be fine with it. However, I felt it would be an inconvenience if I roomed there for three nights. Moreover, I wasn't sure if I would enjoy spending time there, with the language barrier and age gap. Oh, come on, Melissa. I promise I'll monitor myself extra carefully over the weekend. I can set an alarm to wake myself up to check my glucose levels. I can leave food next to my bed. I can do a lot of things. I know you feel it hinders your independence, but you're my only student on this field trip. It's my responsibility to guarantee your safety and well-being. I want this to be a wonderful experience. Maybe I should cancel my plans and stay here, just in case. Uh At that moment, the office chair swiveled around and Hendrik casually veered from his laptop. I'll stay. <laughs> If it's not a problem, I could stay. Mm. It'd be no trouble, and I'd catch up on my work, too. Oh, would you? You're a godsend, Hendrik. Relieved, Sherry exhaled with a hand on her chest. Huh. From her tone of voice, it was like the choice was already made without my input. She must have known him for a long time to place that much trust in him. Of course, Melissa has the final say. Don't feel pressured to say yes because I offered. You know yourself best, and I respect your decision. <sighs> My eyes darted between Sherry and Hendrik, one obviously more distraught than the other. I know myself best, huh? Then... Oh... I don't want Hendrik here, mostly because I'm not in his route, but at the same time, I don't know if declining the offer means I'm going to be by myself, or if that means Sherry is going to stay here, because I feel like a dick if, <laughs> if I'm forcing Sherry to stay here just because I don't want Hendrik here. Uh, okay. How about we save? I'm going to decline. If it lets me stay by myself, I'll keep it. But if Sherry's gonna stay with us anyway, then I'm gonna accept, because I don't want to do that to Sherry. Thank you, Hendrik, but I know I'll be okay on my own. He gave an understanding nod and glanced over to gauge Sherry's reaction. She let out a defeated sigh. Huh. If you strongly believe that, Melissa, then I'll comply. Whew, okay. Relieved. 
However, Hendrik does live the closest. I think. Where are you now? Just outside of Namur. I'm 15 minutes away by truck. 10 if I rush. You wouldn't mind being an emergency contact, would you? Hendrik exchanged a knowing glass with me and I gave him a strained smile. We silently agreed her concerns were a tad overbearing. I love Hendrik's face right now. I'll jot my cell number down right now. He swiveled in his seat as he turned to his desk once again to grab a pen. We heard a light rap on the doorframe. <laughs> Augustine walked through the entrance, announcing that he had locked everything up save the back and front door. All done. Now has the decision been settled? Augustine had been in the same room briefly when Sherry first addressed me, therefore he had the gist of the situation. It has. The routine will stay the same and Melissa will remain here over the weekend. I'll be fine. I already talked it over and Hendrik will be in emergency contact since he lives close by. And then we will see you Monday, Melissa. Don't push yourself too hard. A tap on the table drew my attention and I saw a slanted writing on paper. Hendrik closed his laptop and pulled the plug. I'll leave my number here. Awesome, thanks. Phew. Once their belongings were sorted, the trio fil fil filed out and I followed to give them a proper goodbye. After they left, I closed the front door and retreated back into the laboratory, wondering what to do for the rest of the evening. Hmm. That's not creepy. Ah! Her pajama top is so cute! I want your whole wardrobe, though. Ah, I wish I could see the pants that go with that. Ugh. Oh jeez, what was that? The stairs creaked, as if someone had stepped on the bottom step. Slowly, the creaks got closer and slower, and then... stopped. I rolled over and peered at the exit, half expecting someone to be standing there. Wind rattled through the cracks in the roof, creating a high-pitched whistle. I pulled the sleeping bag over me, trying not to whimper. I cranked up my 3DP and inserted the earbuds, hoping to forget the scary sounds. Luckily, the Wi-Fi was still on and I connected my handheld. A few of my friends were online, playing various games, including an unfamiliar avatar. Oh yeah, we exchanged friend codes recently. Wait, so Shoji is still awake? <laughs> Using the touch screen, I navigated to the messaging system that came with the handheld and decided to contact him. It was clunky without a keyboard, but I needed someone to talk to more than playing a game. Oh. Hmm, how to greet him. Scream for help. Cheerful hello. Chide him for staying up late. I'll just be cheerful. Hello. <laughs> ah, and her ID's purple. Perfect. Oh, hey, we're both on. Hello. Ugh. Hello. Ah. How are you? It's pretty late. What are you doing up? Nothing much, really. Internet browsing, listening to music, that type of thing. You? Try not to cry. <sighs> the museum sounds so scary at night, and I'm practically huddled under the covers. Can you keep talking to me until I fall asleep, please? Sure. Do you have access to your laptop? It'll be easier to talk that way. The touchscreen on these things are painfully slow. Yeah, what messengers do you use? I'm my Sophronia Mel on WeChat together. Wow. Perfect. I'll add you so you'll know who I am in a minute. See you there. Or then. I shut my handheld and poked my head out of the sleeping bag. Yanking my earbuds out, I slipped out from the covers. Grabbing my laptop, I set it on the floor beside my air mattress, making sure the cord wasn't strained against the outlet. Resting on my stomach, I impatiently logged in and was relieved to find a notification. Shoji not Shoda has added you. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, this will help me forget all of the horror movie noises. Happy to help. Huh? So you stay at the cave site alone? Yeah, Sherry's at her friend's place. A fellow student was supposed to come, but family emergency and stuff. What's with the name? People mistake you a lot. Ugh, yes, and it's annoying. What about yours? What's a Sophronia? It's based on my favorite swing song. I love it. When I hear it, I want to rock around the clock and jump, jive, and wail, and all that jazz. Mm -mm. You can say, I dig swing, ha ha ha. We 
we've been hanging around Kendrick for too long. <laughs> Are you feeling less scared now? Is there anything else I could do? Let's see. <laughs> Ask for links to cute bunny videos. Encourage talk. I would love to talk more with Shoji, but not right now. Do you have some cute bunny videos, though? Still terrified. I need cute animal videos. Do you know of any? I love bunnies. Or maybe some curling cats. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Probably have something in my vision history. For the rest of the night, Shoji provided me with links to various videos to keep my mind focused on something light and fluffy. Since I was preoccupied watching, our conversations were non-existent, save for repetitive commentary. Before I knew it, I gave him a hasty goodbye and passed out, my ears no longer paying attention to the creaks and howls echoing through the museum. It was a nice, dreamless sleep. Ah, <sighs> thanks, Shoji. Your dream. Oh, I got lost. I'm so stressed. Dance, dance, ba oh, that is- Oh no, I fell on my butt! <laughs> no! I'm so stressed. Oh no. I need to do lab. And I need to volunteer. Oh crap, this is bad. Well. Hopefully that internet. Maybe I should do two internets. And then cave, and then volunteer, and then cave. Catch. Um, maybe I should do internet again. Lab. Volunteer. Uh, would like to do more catch, but... Huh, oh well. We'll try that. That week went by fairly quickly. Uh, yeah. Alright, I gotta clean some objects. 22. 8 plus 7 is 15. Plus 6 is 21. Let's try that. Yeah. 6 plus 5 is 11. Plus 4 is 15. Oh, toothpick. Ooh. Uh, 9 plus 8 is 17. There we go. 9 plus 8 is 17. Alright. Man, I love the lab. It's so much faster. Old Wan Industry. I thought that said Obi-Wan, and I'm like, what? <laughs> ah, Augustine! Um, I have a journal entry. Just a minute. Old Wan Industry. Emerged in Africa around 2 million years ago and persisted until 1 million years ago. Consisted of crude chipped pebbles for scraping and chopping. I meant to look at relationships. How are we doing? Got a full heart with the with Shoji. Two and a half hearts with DeAndre. I destroyed my relationship with Kyler. Uh, Hendrick's the same, and Joan, I think, is the same. Wow, Kyler hates me. <laughs> Augustine, why does this vertebra look so petted? Hmm, looks like silly cave bear got eaten by smart hyena or lion. Those are bite marks, attacking the anterior thoracic vertebral column. And... Lower spine. Petite fleur. Eee! I squealed in my seat as a brush poked my back. <laughs> Thanks, Augustine. If that is from layer A2GR, I believe we already have three bones from that same animal. Must be tough piecing it all together. We have collections going back to 80s. We are still fitting pieces found decades apart. Did people always know about this cave? How was it found? You aware of a popular movie with an archaeologist who carries whip? <laughs> oh yes. Because of that movie, many kids were inspired and explored region, pretending to find treasure. Silly kids stumble on cave here. Really? Who knew an inaccurate portrayal of archaeology would lead to a real archaeological discovery? We still get an occasional student who is disappointed this cave is not a booby-trapped temple. I would lose all my help if that was the case. Maybe it is, and we just haven't dug the traps up yet. If so, you will be the first to find out. ho <laughs> <laughs> He laughed and excused himself, and I glanced at the chewed bone. 
Maybe I should dig on a higher level instead. <laughs> instead of my spawn. Yay, I didn't chop my hand off. Hooray. Completely famished by this morning's task, I scooted onto the bench with a bowl of mushroom soup. Grabbing a slice of sweet sh of swish cheese, I teared it and dropped the pieces into the soup. Hmm. Oh, you guys have new clothes. Cute. What are you doing? Adding cheese to my soup? Is that what people do in America? I've never seen people, anyone, add cheese to their soup, actually. <laughs> it's what I do. I guess it's common enough? I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> oh no. Kyler's judging me even more. A few seats down, I noticed Kyler also eyeing my actions before silently returning to his meal. Was adding cheese to soup really that bizarre? I mean, I know there's French onion soup which has cheese in it, but... I don't know, this sounds strange. I heard a holler behind us, and many of us automatically turned our heads towards the driveway. Who are you? A tall woman dragged a suitcase behind her while her free hand waved toward one end of the eating area. Hendrik immediately stood up and approached her. Rose, glad you could finally make it. I didn't think you'd arrive this early. New no thanks to you! You practically ditched me in the middle of those core samples! What can I say? Analyzing core samples is boring. Oh no, don't pun around me with me, Mr. Ace Geologist. Her stern expression faded, and they both exchanged a cordial grin as they leaned in for a cheek kiss. <laughs> Augustine and Sherry gathered around her as well. She's super cute. Would it be okay to introduce myself, too? Um... Maybe later. <laughs> No, it feels so rude if I just barged in there and introduced myself. I was a student under Sherry, after all. However, I was still curious. I glanced in Kyler's direction. Hey, Kyler. Kyler? Who is she? Rosemary. She's part of the main team. She does lithic, lithic work and all that. Stone tools and technology. Huh, that's pretty neat. Usually, she arrives earlier to teach students about identifying Flint. He trailed off, feeling that his answer was self-contained enough, and resumed eating his meal. Rosemary is... Chantal delivered a concise summary, and Joan nodded happily. Of course, that means yet another lecture. If only they covered the stuff I want to learn. Chantel slumped over while Joan fidgeted anxiously. They exchanged a few words in French and Chantel seemed touched. Aw, Joan. What did she say? She says she'll stay with me for the whole eight weeks. Most students, if archaeology isn't their elective, only need to stay for four at the most. I mean, I could break it down, but I'd rather get it over with in one go. Then... Kyler doesn't have to be here? This is his fourth time. I guess not, but it does look good if you're trying to break into archaeological work. Either way, I don't want to pay a hundred euros a week to dig in dirt, but I guess that's his thing. <laughs> He's probably not great at on this. He willingly paid to volunteer? She tilted her head, pondering, before concluding with a careless shrug. Eh. And you're here until the excavation ends? Uh-huh. Be a shame if I only came here for a few weeks, considering how far I've flown. Here till the end. She grinned, proud of her ability to follow the conversation. Her hearing comprehension was superior to her verbal skills. It made me wish I could pick up French faster. <laughs> I swelled my spoon into, into my soup until it was cheesy enough to form strings when I lifted the utensil. Satisfied, I swallowed a mouthful. Joan stuck out her tongue at the sight, which is super cute, causing Chantel to laugh. <laughs> Stop giving her culture shock, Melissa. She's very sheltered. It's just cheese! Fromage! Before we knew it, lunch was officially over, and it was time to return to our assigned tasks. Hopefully I would be able to properly introduce myself to Rosemary later. I had a feeling I'd learn a lot from her. She seems absolutely adorable. Oh no! Okay, here we go again. 9 plus 8 is 17. Okay. Nine, let's say seventeen. 
15 plus 7 is 24. Yeah, good thing I didn't push for more. 9, okay, that's not 9, 6, plus 5 is 11, plus 4 is 15. Plus 7 is 15. Plus 6 is 21. Ugh, I should have went for the toothpick. I, I did a decent... What do you mean I did a decent job? I broke one thing. Okay, fine. I mean, I wasn't clean enough. Aculean industry. I'll have to take a look at that. Right now. <laughs> Apparently the air is tense. Hold on. Aculean industry. Existed between 16 million and 200,000 years ago. It's known for its pear-shaped hand axes and for flaking both sides of a stone. Bifacial. This industry is associated with Homo erectus. Alrighty. Tense. Why was the air around here so tense? I pondered that while I stirred my cheese-drenched tomato soup. Oh my goodness. Cheese! Both Joan and Chantal, who previously sat and talked with me, had disappeared. Many students paced by the museum entrance. Some checked their phones or glanced over the shoulders of others to view their screens. DeAndre, my man! Where have you been? Meanwhile, DeAndre spread mustard on his second or third sandwich. At least he seemed unfazed. What's going on? Everyone appears to be anticipating something. Exam results are being released today. This late? After a casual shrug, he took a large bite of his sandwich. He wiped his mouth before speaking. Usually they're released earlier, but they had some problem with the data or entry system or whatever. They must be super important if everyone looks this anxious. It's a make or break it deal. If students don't average out a certain percentage, they have to repeat a year. <laughs> you must be nervous then. You seem rather calm. Wish him luck. I'm gonna wish him luck. I know you've already taken the test, but break a leg. I'll be rooting for you. <coughs> he abruptly coughed, but managed to choke the morsel down. Thumping his chest, he cleared his throat while snorting amusedly. <coughs> what? What did I say? N nothing It's just root has an entirely different meaning in New Zealand. Uh? I have a hunch, but okay, what is it? <laughs> He took a few moments to calm himself and speak coherently. <laughs> er, well, if you said something like, I'll root for the whole team, I'd be amazed by your stamina. Uh, DeAndre! What? You said it, not me. <laughs> I gave him a swift jab with my shoe and he feigned pain. Ugh. Oh, stop that! I don't want to end my rugby career that quickly. But thanks for the support, Mel. Make sure you say Barrack for next time, though. Barrack for? He finished with a playful wink and I rolled my eyes. Although I did make a mental note of that. Not that you need any cheering. You're likely used to this by now. Too used to it. Fortunately, this will be my last semester, and then I'm free. The only thing left is to finish the selective requirement, since I'd hate to waste a semester on a single course. A more expensive course, too. Jealous. At least you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like I barely started and it'll never end. I felt a playful flick on my forehead. It'll be over before you know it. Hang in there. Before I could respond, one of the students announced something in French and everyone tapped away at their phones again. Results are up. From the reactions, DeAndre didn't need to clarify. However, he sat the sandwich down and fished out his phone. Well, let's stay and chat with him, of course. I got a good look at his phone. It was noticeably bigger and clunkier. An older model, and there were dents all over it. Wow, you're not nice to your phone. Have you considered getting one of those protective covers? Those screen protectors? Believe me, I've tried. There's still plastic film all over the side of my desk from attempting to apply those stupid things. <laughs> of course, whenever I want to use it, my phone slows down. Or maybe it's the website, what with the sheer number of students logging in. 
He swung one leg over the bench and scanned for someone. <laughs> Kyler was off to the side, also checking his phone, and DeAndre hollered something to him in French. Kyler responded curtly, but took a few steps closer to talk. I wasn't able to follow until DeAndre motioned to me. Hey, let's not exclude her. Anyway, are you on the Varsity website? Can you check for me? Uh, what department? Seriously? That's sweet as. English department. Kyler paused and glanced at DeAndre inquisitively, but said nothing before turning back to his phone. ID. The first numbers are 826, then 6 again, and... The last number is 942. You ain't wrong. What'd I get? Uh, your average is 16.48. A little better than last time. Not bad. I think you've impressed Kyler. Is that... a good score? What's it out of? 20. I got Grand Distinction, which is pretty solid. I'm guessing A's in your country? Was this the correct ID I checked? Oh? What's this, Kyler? Shocked that a pro athlete got good grades. Smugly, DeAndre raised his hands to his head. After making fists, his fingers sprung out as he mimicked an exploding sound. This is your mind. Kyler scoffed and glanced down at his phone. Mature. Kidding aside, I reckon you did well too. Cheers, buddy. Don't buddy me. Mate? Don't mate me either. Oh, please. Wasn't thinking that. <laughs> There's too much mating jokes going on. After the jest sank in, Kyler massaged his temples with a broad hand. This conversation is over. Kyler stalked off and DeAndre rolled his eyes toward me. We're getting along so well. Aw, is it still related to the whole misunderstanding, or when you both had cooking duty? Completely forgot about that. And yeah, we didn't get along there either. He was absolutely hopeless in the kitchen, and I really didn't have the patience for it. He can't do anything. Oh, come on, it couldn't have been that bad. Mel, he can't do anything. He failed cooking rice. In a rice cooker. Uh, that's bad. That's why, if Helena gives me cooking duty, can we pair up from now on? Hmm. Sure. Or maybe the three of us can work together. Should I try to fix things? Eh, pfft. Forget Kyler. Sure. You can count on me. Sweet as. Thanks, Mel. With that sorted, DeAndre excused himself, explaining that he wanted to see his grades in further detail. I returned to my meal wondering about my own marks. Yeah. I want to know. Oh, I need to... I can't fail the internet with grief. Uh, what do we have today? Oh good, a 5x5. Five five. Thank the maker. Okay, this has to be like this. Um, let's see. And this has to be like this. This has to be like this. This has to be like that. Okay. So that. That. And. Yes. Let's take a look. Three, one, three. Two, one, two, one, three. Three, one, three, two, one, two, one, three. Check that. Oh yeah! I'm getting better at this. I got faunal remains. How exciting. Uh, Y, 2.6, or 26, altitude, 120. I mumbled to myself as I jotted down the measurements. Once that was done, I wrapped the tiny, unidentified bone fragment in tin foil, then slipped a piece of paper with a three on it among the folds. I was digging through some forgotten badger burrow, which meant all the context in it was mixed up and useless. Did I even need to draw this on the document? Even with my music on, I heard it rain heavily outside, and it felt much damper in the cave. Ugh. 
Tyler shifted from his knees to stand up. As a faster digger, he already reached the bottom of his square and had been in a stooped position for some time. Oh, oh no. As I zipped up my plastic bag, the light suddenly went out. There were a few high-pitched squeals, but no real panic. Chatter murmured through the higher levels of the cave. I yanked my earbuds out and stuffed them into my hoodie pocket. I could barely see, although there were faint sources of illumination from emergency lights on the main catwalk. Augustine delivered something in French, while Sherry relayed the message for farther down likely instructions. Pulling out my phone, I switched to the flashlight application and set it on the clipboard between me and Kyler. What did they say? He said that if the lights don't turn on in 10 to 15 minutes, we can leave. He's also grabbing some extra flashlights so he and Sherry can guide everyone out safely. Yeah, I wouldn't feel confident walking around here in the dark, especially on the walkways with no rails. Grabbing my knee pads, I improvised a little cushion and sat down. Kyler did the same, but sat cross-legged with his hands resting on his ankles. There was light conversation, along with jokes and laughter surrounding us. While Kyler and I remained silent, I fought the urge to pick up my phone and fiddle with a game or something to pass the time. I craved conversation with Kyler, but I had no common ground or good entry point. What would I even mention? Dirt? Digging? How annoying it was for Clay to stick to your trowel? Shoji, Shoji was shy, but our interests overlapped. DeAndre was super friendly overall, and Hendrik would launch into a lively monologue if I asked about rocks. Kyler... Spotting him raising his left hand, I let out a tiny protesting whimper before I could stop myself. Wait. His fingers paused inches from his implant, and he turned to me curiously. What is it? <sighs> I mentally kicked myself. I had no inkling of a topic either. In my scramble, I decided to... Mention the weather, talk about badgers, admit to wanting small talk. Uh How about them badgers? I gestured to the ancient burrow and made a vertical motion to indicate its path. I was thinking, since it's now dark, all of the animals here are probably active again. I hope a badger doesn't pop out of the burrow and maul my face off. <laughs> Bewildered, Kyler eyed me from the side before a small chortle escaped his lips. What? Kyler laughing? <laughs> a moment later, he let out a sincere laugh as he shook his head. Wow, so you do have a sense of humor. And it's morbid. No, no, I just didn't expect that. It caught me off guard. A vibrant spark appeared in his usual disposition as he moved his hands to indicate the burrow. I can't believe this worked out so well. Of course that wouldn't happen. That burrow's been long abandoned. Was that really the reason why you made that sound? I curled up with my arms around my knees. Sorry. I did that because I thought you were going to turn your implant off and I wanted to talk to you. You know, to pass the time. Kyler stared at me quizzically, like the notion had never crossed his mind. <laughs> I wondered how common it was for someone to initiate a conversation with him. I see. I was originally going to scratch my head. It wouldn't be sensible to switch it off while awaiting instructions. Why do you turn it off anyway? Concentration? Yes, that and battery life. I find it easier to work in silence while... He glanced down at my phone with the earbuds attached. I smiled wryly. <laughs> Total opposite, huh? I always need background noise, even if I'm reading. Shifting to my knees, I turned to him, sensing that we could maintain a conversation now. I pointed my own ear impulsively as another question bubbled up. Is... I bit my tongue to stop my inquiry and lowered my arm. However, Kyler noticed. For a second, I thought he would give me a deprecate, deprecating frown, but instead he seemed amused. His tone was dry and matter-of-fact. You're so nosy. I'm sorry, you don't have to answer. I don't mind. Anyway, it's hereditary. I was born deaf. What's the sign language taught here? I only know of ASL. Uh, 
there's two. Langosin de Belgique Francophone and the Flemish Sign Language. Both are pretty similar. It's the mouthing and dialects that differ. You're going to ask me to sign now, aren't you? It's like you read my mind! <laughs> Despite that, he seemed delighted, or at least complied without complaint. His hands moved while he spoke. Oh, he's bla- Oh, this is so weird! I can't- Ugh. I'm all- I'm all flabbergasted about Kyler. I usually sign in the French community. Therefore, I'm used to mouthing or speaking French along with it. English... I am a bit slower, but I think you get the picture. His voice was deliberately unhurried, as were the gestures that accompanied it. I watched with interest. Since you're from the States, this is how we sign American. He interlaced his fingers in front of his chest. After making a complete circle, his hands dropped down. So when you complain about a nosy American, I'll know what to look for. There's this nosy American girl. The last gesture looked as if he was pretending to scrape something off the side of his jaw with his thumb. <laughs> he stopped when we both heard voices echoing through the cave. They're telling us to leave everything. Save our documents and photographs here. Safety measure. Gotcha. Thanks. Are you okay down there? <laughs> I figured. I glanced up and spotted Sherry, who held a large and powerful flashlight. Yes, we'll be right up. Wow, that digging session was cut short. But that was amazing. We had a fabulous conversation with Kyler, which I was not expecting. Hmm. Huh. I'm actually kind of excited for his route now.